Thank you, Precious. Yes, I think um, there might be a little gap here in some of what I said earlier, so I think I'm going to go over a little bit of this. All right, so I was just talking about the names of the other names of God, and he has several other names, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sidkenu, and Jehovah Jireh is another name, and we're talking about that this morning. This name is packed with, and it's brim, brimming over with his ability to provide this aspect of God, this characteristic of God. He's more than able to provide for us in ways that will blow our minds. I don't even think we have begun to understand the length and the breadth that God will go to in making provision for us. Isaac asked his father in verse 7 of Genesis 22, Behold the fire and the wood, but daddy, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Sometimes you and I will say, Papa, Father, I see this, I see that, but where is the other thing? Mm. What a loving God he is. And then he will tell us, like Abraham, God will provide Jehovah Jireh. That's his answer to us when we're kind of wondering, okay, this thing is lacking, that thing is lacking. Oh, what's going to happen now, Lord? All he has to say is Jehovah Jireh. You know, in verse 8, Abraham, I want you to notice this, Abraham had not yet known this part of God's character. He didn't know that yet. He had walked with him for a few years and he had learned, known certain things, but he did not know this part yet, Brother Gordon. He did not know this part yet. See, he had to walk through this test first before he would understand this character of God, the one that he had been walking with. And yet, even though he did not know it, it's almost like he was prophesying because here it is he said my son God himself will provide a lamb he was already speaking Jehovah Jireh and didn't even understand brother Gary what he was saying even though he did not know this aspect of God's character yet in answer to his son my son God will provide now, we could have told him, well, actually, <laughs> you're, the, you're the sacrifice. He could have told him, but that would have traumatized the poor child, wouldn't it? Can you imagine telling your son, uh, your son, where's the sacrifice, daddy? Um, you're the sacrifice. Ah! Wouldn't you run if you were that child? I said, my dad has lost that for sure. Mommy! <laughs> Then travel so far. If she ever knew, as I said earlier, she would have heard. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> what a good God we serve. So Abraham was even speaking Jehovah Jireh before that happened. He just said, God Himself will provide a lamb. Even though at that moment he knew that the lamb would have been his own son. Mm. Jesus, based upon what God instructed him to do, and he was going to fulfill that to the letter. God said, this is what I want you to do. How many of us would question that? <laughs> okay, I didn't see any other hand, so I guess I'm the only one. <laughs> I'm the only one that would question that. How many of us would really question Let me see hands. Okay. Yes. Anybody else would question that? Okay. No feet? <laughs> okay. Yeah? We would question that. Abraham didn't. Gosh, the 
father of faith. Oh, Jesus. And we are deceived. Can you imagine that? <sighs> you know, God is Jehovah Jireh. He made so much provision for the Israelites in the wilderness, and I don't have to go into it. You will, rem you will recall there were so many. When they said, Moses, we are hungry. There is no more food left in our stacks that we brought from Egypt. Nothing. I mean, you brought us out here so we could starve? We could have stayed in Egypt and enjoyed the garlic. That's what they had, not garlic like what we know now. Garlic back then. We could have, we could have done that. So why did you bring us out here and again tell me? So God provided manna for them in the wilderness. Every single morning, they had manna. Right? Might not have been steak. Might not have been ribs. Might not have been what? Favorite food? Escovitch fish. <laughs> Curry goat. Some are listening like goat. <laughs> it might not have been some of the stuff that hamburgers and all those things that, that people enjoy eating. It might not have been that but it was enough to sustain them to the point where when the manna came in the afternoon, God said, I don't want you to put up any of that for tomorrow. You know why? Because he knew that he would have been able to provide for them for the next day because he is Jehovah Jireh. Some of them decided though, I'm gonna put some up boy. I'm gonna store up some just in case. And we do that, don't we? We store food up, we store things up because you know tomorrow we want to make sure we have some. Some of them, although they were instructed not to do so, guess what? They still stored it up. And what do you think happened the next day when they went and took off the cloth and said, guess what? Worms. God said, oh, really? You're gonna store it up? You forget that I am who? Jehovah Jireh. I will supply all you need according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. They forgot. So, so many times in the wilderness as they traveled to Canaan, we see that God was their provider. He provided water out of a rock, really, honestly, a rock. He told Moses to strike the rock and water would come forth when they were thirsty. There was no more water that they could find around in the wilderness and water came forth. So many ways God made provision for them. Not just materially. We're talking about the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We're talking about a, 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 a provision, a sustenance for our spirit man. When our spirit man is down, we can trust the Jehovah Jireh to supply what we need to lift us out of that pit and to cause us to come into what I was reading before, the enjoyment, to cause us to come into success, to cause us to come into shelter, graciousness, fulfillment, protection, all of that. This Jehovah Jireh is able, when things look like they're not gonna work out, when things look like, ah, oh, this piece won't actually meet this other piece, he will cause it to come and meet this peace and even supersede that, go beyond that. He, he's not just the God of enough, he's the God of more than enough. Exceeding abundantly, we read about. That's an overflow right there. It's the it's, 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 it's God who can, can, can bring about a revival in our spirit man. This is the Jehovah Jireh that we're talking about. So today, I, I do have one more scripture though in Luke chapter 12, 24 to 28. And I think we all know this. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Just such a sense of God's presence right now. I think when we talk about him and when we talk about his character, mm, he can't help it but draw near. My God, you know why? Because he really wants to be near to us. 
He wants us to know him in that way that we've never known him before. And I don't know about you, but if you want an ounce of God, guess what you'll get? An ounce of God, because he's not going to force himself on you. If you want a pound of God, that's what you'll get. If you want a ton, oh, he's coming with it. I mean, he just wants to reveal himself as Jehovah Jireh, as we have, I mean, I've always heard that phrase, Jehovah Jireh. And I've always just said, yeah, he's, you know, God of more than enough, my provider. But my God, when I was preparing this, I just sensed that he wanted us to see that there's so much more that we have ever seen before. So much more the riches oh, of his grace, rich health. There's just so much more to him. This Jehovah Jireh here, powerful thing. Let's look at Luke chapter 12, verses 24 to 28. And I know we have, um, and I'm going to wrap up in just a couple minutes here. Luke chapter 12, 24 to 28. Mm. God, this is just awesome. This is Jesus speaking here. It's in red. Anything in red in your Bible means Jesus is the one speaking, right? So it says... In verse 24, consider, pay attention, consider the ravens. Look at the ravens, right? They're flying. For they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. They don't have any place to even store stuff. We have cupboards and we have barns. We have different things that we store things in, right? And God Feed at them. How much more are you better than the fowls? Right? We are better than the fowls. And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? So we're going to sit down tonight, and we're going to sit back tomorrow morning. Let me see if I, I can, um, how I can get grow one more inch. <laughs> Let me see if I can do it. Can I do it? I'm going to think really hard. I'm going to concentrate. I'm going to focus. And can we do it? No. But the next day, or the day after that, we get ourselves measured, and we're taller. We've grown an inch taller, and we're like, now how did that happen? We didn't have anything to do with it. Guess who did? God himself. 26 says, if ye then be not able to do that thing which is at least, which is least, which is like, you know, cause ourselves to grow, which we can't do. Why take ye thought for the rest? Consider, verse 27, consider, pay attention to this, really check it out. The lilies, how they grow. Look around. Consider that we could look at the trees right here, these banana trees, this almond tree, I mean, this moringa tree. We could, we could look at it and say, wait a minute. How are they growing? They toil not. Do you see any of these trees getting up <laughs> from the ground? Do you see them? Do you see these trees pushing a lawn more around here, <laughs> more in this lawn? Do you see any of those trees? Doing laundry? Hello. They toil not. Neither do they spin. They spin not. Yet I say unto you that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed, was not dressed and decked out like one of these. Verse 28 says, If then God so clothed the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? So, you know, 
they don't labor because they have to go and work to get money to, to take care of themselves, right? And yet God takes care of them. Do we ever see, I mean, except like maybe we have a drought and it's not raining, Father Garnet, and, and we'll see the, the grass get brown and what have you, and some of the trees maybe start withering. But as soon as it starts to rain again, what happens? It gets green and the trees start to flourish. Who does that? God. And do the trees say, God, you forgot us? They don't. Because they know. <laughs> Funny thing is, they know. But do we know? Do we know Jehovah Jireh? Do we know the one who is able to provide for us at all levels? Not just materially, and we do need that, but the one that can sustain us mentally, emotionally, socially, physically, spiritually. Do we know that one? And as I said earlier, there's no problem with the supplier. There's no problem there to say, well, you know what? Sometimes, think about it. If you need gas and that just came to me for your home, you use a gas tank for your stove and you want another cylinder of gas. It's possible that at that time, the gas company might just be on strike, God forbid, and you can't get another cylinder of gas. The supplier isn't able to supply your need at that time. This supplier, Jehovah Jireh, never ever runs out of his supply. Mm. My God. And the thing is, as I said earlier too, we're asking this supplier maybe for a teacup when he's ready to give us the whole ocean. This kind of a supplier, Jehovah Jireh. So every time you hear that song again, or you're singing it, or you're thinking about Jehovah Jireh, my provider, think about the fact that he supplies all of your need according to his riches in glory. Riches, and it's vast. And we can pull from this supplier every single thing that we need at that time we need it. He will never run out of whatever we need at all levels. God is just so awesome. Can we give him a clap of praise? And can we just thank him today, Jehovah Jireh, that you are our provider, you are our supplier, you are more than enough, and you never, your wells don't run dry. Love you to stay, God. We bless you. We magnify you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for the word that you brought to Minister Pastor Sandra this morning for us. Yes, we needed that desperately, didn't we? Because sometimes we tend to forget. We tend to forget and we take things for granted, right? The things that we have around us, things that, we, that come into our laps every day, into our wallets every day, into, our grocery, into the grocery store that we have access to every day, we just take it for granted. But there's so many that don't have across this world, right? Thank you so much. So we have to be grateful, we have to be one, oh, I have to wonder of the greatness of God and all that he's done for us and all that he's provided for us. Lord God, we thank you, God. We thank you for, for the word, Lord God, for your provisions every day, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. So much things that he provides for us. But we take for granted, as I said. But when you don't have it, when it's not available, then you call out to God, right? We all call out, oh God, help, help me, help us. We are in need. But he can, he can provide and he is able to provide when we are on his side. He's always gonna provide for his people, the Israelites. All right, he provided for them all those years. There was a reason why he went. They went through what they went through. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they get hard-headed. Mm -hmm. They don't want to follow his, his his guidance. They don't want to follow his word. They want to follow his instruction. Yes. So what happens? As we always, as we say in Jamaica, if you don't hear, you must feel. <laughs> so God, we thank you, Father God, for this word that you to remind us 
of your provisions, of all you've done for us, all you will have, have done for us, all you will continue to do for us. You sent your, your son, Lord God, that whoever knows him, whoever believes in him, will live, will have everlasting. And we thank you for that, Lord God. Holy God, Holy Father, we praise you and magnify your name, Lord God, for who you are. Yes, sir. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Lord God, we ask, we, we, we just ask you, Lord God, as we end this service, Lord God, that you will continue to keep your presence around us, Lord God, your anointing around us, Lord God, over us, to keep us, to protect us, to provide for us, Lord God, this day and the days to come, Lord God. Let us not forget, let us not wonder, Lord God, who you are, Lord God, but just know with a surety, Lord God, that you are God of all gods, Lord God, God of the heavens and the earth, Lord God, God of our lives, that wants, as I always said, always want the best for us, his children. Also, so much more than our earthly father. He is our heavenly father, our yes, Abba Father. Yes, yes, yes. King of kings and Lord of lords, mm -hmm. God of all might, God of all wisdom, all power. Yes. Lord God, we serve you, we glorify you, we magnify you, Lord God for who you are in this earth, Lord God. We thank you, God, in your precious holy name. Amen. Um, while, while we play that song, um, I don't know if anybody needs prayer. That's right here. We can pray as well. And um, we just thank God for this time. Amen.